from selling CDs out of his father's garage to co-founding the largest rideshare company in the world, Travis Kalanick has certainly left his mark on the tech industry. Driven by his passion for innovation and entrepreneurship, Kalanick has had great successes, but not without its share of controversy. So, let's dive into the life of Travis Kalanick and discover how he became the mastermind behind one of the world's most successful ride-sharing companies. Travis Kalanick was born in Los Angeles, California in 1976 to an engineer father and a mother who worked in retail marketing. From a very young age, Kalanick showed a keen interest in technology and entrepreneurship. He was always tinkering with gadgets, and at the age of just 12, he began coding and started his first business selling CDs. Kalanick was an ambitious child, and he knew that he wanted to make a name for himself in the tech industry. After finishing high school, Kalanick attended the University of California, Los Angeles. However, he dropped out of college before completing his degree. By this point, he had already made a name for himself in the tech industry by co-founding Scour, a file-sharing company. Scour was initially very successful and attracted investments from high-profile individuals, including Michael Ovitz, the former president of Walt Disney. However, the company's fortunes took a turn for the worse when they were sued for copyright infringement by the music industry. The lawsuit resulted in Scour's bankruptcy, and this marked the beginning of a controversial journey for Kalanick. Despite the controversy surrounding Scour, Kalanick was undeterred, and he continued to push forward with his entrepreneurial endeavors. He went on to found Red Swoosh, a peer-to-peer -peer content delivery network that allowed users to download large files more quickly. The company was successful, and in 2007, it was acquired by Akamai Technologies for $19 million. Kalanick was pleased with the acquisition, but it was not long before he was deploying his big payday onto his next venture. In 2009, Kalanick and his friend Garrett Camp came up with the idea for Uber. The idea came about after the pair had trouble finding a taxi in Paris, and they realized that there was a gap in the market for a ride-sharing service. They founded Ubercab, as it was then known, and the app was an instant success. Travis Kalanick was the CEO of Uber from the company's inception in 2009 until 2017. During his tenure as CEO, Kalanick was known for his aggressive and sometimes controversial management style. He was credited with turning Uber into a global ride-hailing giant, but his leadership was also marked by several controversies. The first big controversy that plagued Uber during Kalanick's tenure was the allegation that Uber had been using a software called Grayball to evade law enforcement officials who were attempting to crack down on the ride-sharing service in various cities around the world. Grayball was essentially a program that identified potential law enforcement officers and denied them access to Uber services, thereby making it more difficult for them to gather evidence of Uber's illegal operations. The software worked by using various techniques to identify potential law enforcement officials, including analyzing credit card information, app activity, and social media accounts. When a potential law enforcement officer was identified, the software would then show them a fake version of the Uber app, complete with fake cars and drivers, in order to prevent them from using the service. Uber's use of Grayball was particularly controversial, because it was seen as a clear attempt to evade law enforcement and continue operating illegally in cities where it had been banned. The company faced intense backlash from the media, the public, and regulators, with many calling for increased oversight and regulation of ride-sharing services like Uber. Eventually, Uber admitted to using Grayball and promised to stop using the software. The company also faced fines and other penalties in several cities where it had been found to be operating illegally. The use of Grayball remains one of the most controversial aspects of Uber's history, and it has contributed to the ongoing debate about the regulation of ride-sharing services and the balance between innovation and public safety. The second legal battle that followed Kalanick and Uber was brought about by once partner Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Uber and Alphabet were once working together in developing self-driving car technology, with Alphabet's subsidiary Waymo providing Uber with crucial technology. However, 
This relationship soured when Waymo filed a lawsuit against Uber in 2017, alleging that Uber had stolen Waymo's trade secrets to develop its own self-driving technology. According to the lawsuit, a former Waymo employee, Anthony Lewandowski, had stolen approximately 14,000 confidential files and trade secrets before leaving the company to start his own self-driving truck company, Auto, which was quickly acquired by Uber. Waymo claimed that Uber then used these stolen trade secrets to develop its own self-driving technology, giving them an unfair advantage in the industry. The legal battle between Uber and Waymo went on for more than a year, with both sides presenting evidence and testimony in court. In February 2018, Uber settled the lawsuit, agreeing to pay Waymo $245 million in equity, representing approximately 0.34% of Uber's valuation at the time. The lawsuit and subsequent settlement represented a major setback for Uber's self-driving car program and cast a shadow over the company's culture of aggressive competition and innovation. It also highlighted the risks and potential legal consequences of aggressively pursuing self-driving technology, which remains a highly competitive and rapidly evolving field. The last significant controversy occurred in 2017, when a former Uber engineer named Susan Fowler wrote a blog post describing a culture of sexual harassment and discrimination at the company. The post went viral and led to an investigation that uncovered numerous instances of sexual harassment, discrimination, and a toxic work environment at Uber. Kalanick was criticized for his handling of the situation and ultimately resigned as CEO in June 2017. Despite the controversies, Kalanick's tenure as CEO was marked by rapid growth and innovation. Under his leadership, Uber expanded to hundreds of cities around the world, launched several new products and services, and became one of the most valuable startups in the world. His vision for Uber revolutionized the ride-sharing industry, while the company's app-based platform enabled drivers and riders to connect in a way that had never been seen before. Uber quickly became one of the most successful ride-sharing companies in the world, with a valuation of over $80 billion at its peak. Since leaving Uber, Kalanick has founded a new company called Cloud Kitchens, which focuses on the food delivery industry. Cloud Kitchens provides commercial kitchens for restaurants and delivery-only brands, enabling them to expand their delivery footprint without the need for additional physical locations. Recently, Kalanick has also launched a new venture capital fund called 10100. The fund focuses on investing in technology companies that aim to solve big problems in areas such as real estate. With this new venture, Kalanick continues to push the boundaries of innovation and entrepreneurship. Travis Kalanick's journey has been one of both success and controversy. From his early successes with Scour and Red Swoosh, to the founding of Uber and subsequent controversies, Kalanick's impact on the tech industry cannot be ignored. His vision for Uber revolutionized the ride-sharing industry and paved the way for other app-based services. Today, Kalanick continues to push the boundaries of innovation with his new ventures. So the question remains, what will Travis Kalanick do next? Will he continue to push the boundaries of innovation and entrepreneurship? Or will he take a step back from the industry? Only time will tell. But one thing is for certain, Travis Kalanick remains one of the great innovators of the 21st century.